right. So we've been talking about pronouns. So what is a pronoun, guys? A pronoun is a word used in the place of a noun. A pronoun is a word used in the place of a noun. Pronouns take the place of nouns. Let me write that up here because someone lost their paper. Okay, well, you just have to start all over, too. All right, so yesterday we learned list two. Remember, list two pronouns will cover the name of someone. So instead of saying that person's name, which is the noun, we take out their name and we replace it with a certain pronoun. And these pronouns are he, she, him, her, his, hers. It just depends on the context that we were using the noun to determine whether or not, you know, which noun it'll be, okay? So uh, let me pause for a second, Asa, because I have some people that have to write this part, and I'm gonna let them write that for a second. All right. And practice today with some sentences, replacing the nouns for the new pronouns that we've learned. So I have Dan can run. So we have the noun Dan. We're going to take out Dan. Sorry, write the sentence first. My bad. I forgot why I did that. So write this sentence first, just like we did last week. So write the sentence first. Wait, that's the sentence. This one right here, the one that I'm on right here. This one. Dan can run. Write that sentence, and then we'll replace it. Okay, do we have the sentence? All right, so let's go ahead and replace this. So Dan can run. We're going to take out Dan. What's the pronoun I can use instead of Dan? He. So let's X out Dan and let's put the pronoun. He can run. So replace that with he. Okay, I'm ready for the next sentence. All right, so this one says the blue pen is for Jane. Go ahead and write this one. The blue pen is for Jane. Helmet. No. 
gonna get with that. <clears throat> they <clears throat> gave grandma and granddad a big wave and will be back. Okay, we have it ready? <clears throat> no, okay. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, we got it now? Not yet. No? Okay. I don't see one dog. They are it's gonna come off. All right, so the blue pen is for Jane. All right, so we are going to replace. Yeah, I can see our work, please. We're going to replace the noun Jane. What pronoun can I say? The blue pen is for her. What? What was it? Her. Her. The blue pen is for. Okay, let's do our third one. Monica is 10. Go ahead and write this one. <laughs> Monica is 10. I say the same thing every time we read that. Not really. Hi, Monica. Monica. Huh? 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 That's right, that's right. Sure. 
All right, so we have Monica is 10. All right, let's replace Monica. Monica, what pronoun can I put in place of Monica? She. Well, she was going to say it. No, she. Her is 10? No, she is 10. Remember, guys, if we're going to replace the pronoun, we have to make sure it actually makes sense inside of the sentence. Wait, her could sense? work, but her is sin is not that, that, No. She is sin. Yeah. Sam, I. She is Monica. Why do you keep on saying that? Monica. Yeah. Okay, and then let's do our last one. The pencil is for Sam. Let's go ahead and do our last one. The pencil is for Sam. That's fine. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, F, All right, so good job. All right, guys, so this is how we'll replace list two uh, now for list two pronouns, okay? 
All right. So we'll take that home today, guys. So take one, you can put that in your binder so that she can study that tonight. Then she can prepare for your test on Thursday. I said, do not touch my bond. I'm going to use the bathroom real quick, Miss Fuji. Say that again. I'm going to use the bathroom real quick. Okay. Yeah, they're putting their stuff in their binder, so you can do that. You're reading page 18, Lost Mike. What? I lost my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm not checking. I just need to go. The thing. Please, can you cover your mouth while coughing? Thank you. Okay, page 18. So let's go ahead and get started. Thank you, Kendall, for being ready. Ace, so you're ready as well? I okay, know. lost mic. All right. Uh, Ace, so you can do 18. Kendall, you'll do 19. Lost mic. Mike is lost. He cannot see his mom. Is his mom in the cave? No, his mom is not in the cave. Did his mom take a bike ride up the road? Okay, so we're introduced to La uh, Mike, right? And who did he lose? Mom. He lost his mom, right? So where was the first place he checked? The cave. The cave, was she there? No, so now he's going to see if she took a bike ride up the road. Kendall? No, his mom is not on the bike. Did his mom hide in the kitchen bowls? I don't know what Kyle? Kyle? Uh, Please? No, his mom is not in the leaf house. Did his mom take a nap in the Pins next. Okay, so what did she take a bike ride up the road? No. Nope, that's not where she was. Where did he check next? The pile of what? He checked the leaves. Was she there? Now he's going to see if she's in the hen's nest. Okay, 20. Elijah. <laughs> no. No. His mom is not in the Hence next. Wait! I see Mike's mom. His mom is in the tree. Mike's mom is glad to see him. And Mike is glad to see his mom. Okay, good. So was she in the hen's nest? No, so now someone looks in the tree. Is that where she was? Yep, his mom was in the tree. So Mike found his mom. She was in the tree the whole time. Yep. Wait, that's a box or a squirrel? 
Okay, let's look at 22. Uh, not, uh, no, because I'm, I'm doing this. All right, let's look at S. David, come read the words or the phrases. Mm -hmm. Read that one and then go inside. One and one and T. One. One. A blue and a black. And a blue and black. And a pencil. <laughs> no, both. All three. So one, one cat. And Two okay. hats. Okay. One dog. Six dogs. One bee. Two bees. Okay, good. All right, let's read the bottom portion. Seven. Wait, what is this? 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 And him to bed the duck and him. Okay, yep. All right, let's look at 23. Let's read the phrases. Cairo. One big God made the way. God made the sun. God gave us leg to wear run. All right, good. All right, so that's what we're stopping today. Tomorrow we will read about Max and Tex and Dot and her cat. Okay. All right, good. All right, let's go ahead and get out your science and social studies. We'll go over our lessons this week in science and social studies. Yay, Let's start with our uh, science. Moving on to our next chapter, talking about forces. Um, page 32. Yes. Uh-huh. Page 32. So, so discovering our toys. So this week we are going to talk about the three forces. Everything has to move by a force, whether it's a push or a pull, everything moves by a force, okay? So things don't move just because. In order for, say if I was going to use this eraser, just holding it here is not gonna make it move, right? But when I start to push it to move, that's when the eraser becomes effective. I had to apply a force to it and the force that I used was pushing so that it could move. This cart that I have my computer on here, right? Just now it's just sitting still, but until I pull it to move, that's when it will move. So a force is a push or a pull. Whenever things need to, things cannot move on their own, they only can move if there's a push or a pull being done, being done to the thing, okay? So let's talk about the forces. So in 32, so we have many different toys that you could play with. Some of your toys are strictly indoor toys. Some of your toys are outdoor toys. 
some need air in order to work, some need water in order to work. And so all of these toys need some type of force in order for it to be useful. Again, a force is a push or a pull. It's needed to push or pull something to make it move. Three of the forces that we're going to discuss this week are water, air, and wind. And we'll relate these three forces to your toys. So water, air, and wind are three forces that we need in order to move things. Water, air, and wind, okay? Let's look at 33. So let's talk about water. So if you look at the boat and the duck, are they useful without the water? Can we do anything with them without the water? No, we cannot. The water is used to help push both the boat and the duck to move. They are able to move because of the force of the water. The water pulls them to move, right? We, we call it floating on the water, but the water is a force that's pulling and pushing them to move. So that's why water is a force. They'll float on the water because they're lighter than the water, but the water is the force that's pushing them in order to move. Moving water is a force. It pushes or pulls things. Forces push and pull things, okay? Next, we have the air. Look at the football, look at the paper airplane, basketball. None of these toys would be useful without air, right? If we didn't have, put it up, put it up. If we didn't have any air, we would not be able to use a lot of these toys, like balloons, right? A balloon without air is, is useful. It's not useful, it's useless, I mean. A football, a basketball, they need air inside of them in order to move. So when they don't have air in them, a lot of them are usually nothing. But as they fill with air, it pushes them to become what it needs to become, like a ball. It's closed, and then when you put air, it starts to expand. The air is pushing the ball. No. <laughs> Sit. The air is pushing the ball to open. So that is how air is a force. It pushes, it fills it up and pushes it and it makes it expand. So balloons, balls, bubbles even need air, right? When you blow the bubble, it's capturing air on the inside of it. So that is how air is a force. Let's look at 34. Let's talk about how wind is a force. Wind is a force. Who's going to beat that wind? Like when you, you know the things that you push down and no, put it in the, the hole in the, the ball, you, it makes it bigger. Miss Blue That so makes air the water in the ball. The water makes but the waves on the sea make the water oh, green. So like this way. way. All right. No, no, no. Okay, so let's talk about wind. So the wind, so we have a kite, a sailboat, a pinwheel. None of these toys would be fun without wind. I mean, with, yeah, none of these toys are fun without wind. If wind <laughs> is there, then the toy becomes fun. We know that already. A kite, it will not fly unless there's wind blowing. A pinwheel, it will not spin unless wind is blowing. Wind is air that moves. So wind will blow things and make things move. A kite, a kite will not fly unless there is wind pushing the kite. So kites, pinwheels and sailboats need air to push it to move. It's for him to push it to move without wind, these things are useless. Without wind, these things are useless, right? So wind is moving air. So when the wind moves it, it's pushing or pulling whatever it is to move. That is how wind is a force. So these are the three forces, water, air, and wind. And the job of a force is to push or pull something in order to make it move. Things cannot move unless there is a force forcing them to move, okay? So where are the three forces? Water, air, and wind. And a force is a what? Push or a 
pull. Can things move without a force? No, it needs a force in order to move, okay? Good, so that's your science, guys. Very simple. Move on to our social studies. Okay, we're on page 29. We'll be talking about another person this week, Abraham Lincoln. I'm going to break this out open. And I'm going to let the people fall down here. All right. So we are going to talk about Abraham Lincoln. So we have covered Benjamin Franklin last week. We talked about George Washington, the father of his country. He was the first president. Then last week we talked about Benjamin Franklin. Throw that away. And you already know what I'm about to Okay. All right. So Benjamin Franklin was a wise American. Remember, he didn't have a lot of schooling, but that did not stop him from learning. He was able to print books at 12 years old. And he also um, helped the country in a lot of ways, especially when America first began. He was one of the founding people to sign the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. Benjamin Franklin also was a scientist. Remember, he invented some things. You had it and you played with it the whole time. No. No, do what I ask you to do. No. And you see how you're disturbing me again. So anyway, so Benjamin Franklin was a scientist who invented different things. Does anyone remember some of the things that he invented? He, he built one, invented. It's a different question. And a lightning rod. I didn't ask what he built. I said, what did he invent? That's not an invention. The bifocal glasses and the stove. He was from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where he helped the city get a lot of things. What are some of the things he built in his city? A school. A hospital. A fire station. He put street lights on the road. Library. The streets smooth. He 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 made smooth streets. Yes. This is cool. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and look at twenty nine. So there was a man named Abraham Lincoln who was born. In Kentucky, Kentucky is a state. That's where Ace is from. Ace, you're from Kentucky, right? I don't know if she's there. Yeah. So, yeah, he was born in Kentucky. Okay. He was born into a poor family. They lived in a one-room log cabin, so they did not have a big home at all. It was just, like, one room. 
Everything was in one room, the kitchen, the bedroom, everything. So his family was not rich at all. They were pretty poor. And he grew up in this one room log cabin in 1809. That is when he was born, 1809. He was born on February 12th, 1809. And actually, if you look at a calendar, his birthday is on the calendar. It'll say Lincoln's uh, Lincoln's birthday um, on February 12th. That's when he was born, February the 12th, 1809. Okay, so, and his birthday is, yeah, okay. So, by the time Abraham Lincoln was born, many things had changed. The U.S. now had 13 states, I'm sorry, uh, 17 states by the time that he was born. So America was growing and it was changing in a lot of ways when this man, Abraham Lincoln, was born. So he was born in Kentucky in 1809. His family was poor. Okay, let's look at 30. Let's talk more about him. So Abraham Lincoln was born into a poor family. He didn't go to school much, right? Because he had to help out at home and work. Unfortunately, just like how Benjamin Franklin wasn't able to get a lot of education, um, Abraham Lincoln also had to stop school when he was young. Okay, but he did not stop this, stop let this stop him from learning. He continued to learn even though he did not have school. How did he do that? Well, he continued to read books. He would read a lot of books, which were super beneficial in him growing in his education. He read a lot of books. And one of the books that he read the most was the Bible. So he would often read the Bible. He uh, remembered a lot of the verses and he would tell them to other people as well. So Abraham Lincoln was not able to get all the schooling he needed, but it did not stop him. He continued to learn. Page 31. So his family, he was born in Kentucky, but when he was a younger, he was a little older, he moved to Indiana, and then eventually his family moved to Illinois, which is another state as well. If you remember, we did Chicago on the board yesterday, and Chicago is in Illinois. Now, I don't know if he was in Chicago, but he was in Illinois, I do know that. So him and his family moved to Illinois, and... America is still growing. So in 1830, him and his family moved to Illinois, and that's where he spent a lot of his adult life in Illinois. So his very first job was working in a little store, and everyone knew him because of his honesty. And so there was a nickname for him. They called him Honest Abe because he would always tell the truth, and because he was an honest person, they would call him Honest Abe. So after he graduated, after when he became an adult, he decided to become a lawyer. So he was a famous lawyer in Illinois. People liked him very much. He also served on Congress as a senator. And then in 1860, when election time came around for the president, Abe decided he would run for president. He says, well, I've been a politician for some time. He says, I you know, was a lawyer, people know me, they know I'm honest. So he decided to run for president. And guess what happened? He won. So in 1860, Abraham Lincoln became the 16th, 1-6, the 16th president of the United States of America. So that is why Abraham Lincoln is probably one of the most famous people is because he was one of the presidents. And we'll talk about also next week, why he was very famous as well. Abraham Lincoln is also on the penny, the coin, the penny. That's where we can see his face. And he's on the five dollar. No, I'm sorry, that's not him. It's Andrew Jackson. Yeah, he is. He's on the five dollar bill as well. So he's on two things. Abraham Lincoln's on the penny and he's on the five dollar bill. So that's the two bills we can see him. So remember Benjamin Franklin's on the hundreds. George Washington is on the dollar bill. Abraham Lincoln is on the penny and the five dollar bill. Okay, so we're not going to cover everything about Abraham Lincoln today. I just wanted to introduce him. So he was born in Kentucky in 1809. He was born into a very poor family. They lived in a one room log cabin and he um, he was not able to finish school, but that did not stop him from learning. He still continued to read a lot of books. He also read the Bible. His first job was in a little store and he be and when he was an adult, he became a lawyer. 
He would worked in Congress. And then in 1860, he ran for president and won and became the 16th president. And we can see his face on the $5 bill and the $1 bill. Okay. So next week, we will talk more about Abraham Lincoln. And we will talk about what happened during his presidency and unfortunately what happened to him in the end. Okay. All right, that's it, guys, for social studies. Abraham Lincoln. All right, so we'll stop here today, guys. This, I think we covered, yes, we covered language, reading, science, and social studies. Um, if y'all, if Ace, if you didn't complete all your workbook pages, you can do all of that, okay? I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.